Feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Oh, did you enjoy that? Don't we love singing about the bread of heaven? You know, last time we, we put out a, a worship session like this, um, Mike did in his... his spot for the children uh something about the, the different hats that, that he wears and the different names of jesus and we're going to pick up on that theme over this and and a couple of subsequent sessions and today we're thinking about the words when jesus said i am the bread of life that's why we chose our opening song one of the things that we we know is that bread is essential for our daily living but we'll, we'll touch on that later on in our service this morning. You know, there is enough and to spare in our world. And we live in a very broken world in these days. But this, this sense of sharing and looking out for the other's best interests has got to be really at the heart of all we as Christians do. We're going to sing a song now which is entitled Beauty for brokenness and it just tells us that out of all the terrible things that sometimes seem to be around us God can bring some real beauty. May we just join in the spirit of this music and then we pray together.
Shall we pray? Father God, we come before you with the words of our last song on our hearts. We live in a world needing hope where people search for justice, joy and peace. Where people need a friend and need the compassion we can share with them. God, we pray today that our love can change from a spark to a flame and that flame would spread, spread across the world from one to another. We pray today that you would give us our daily bread. We ask that you would give us all we need and that we would recognise you are the bread of life and all we need can be found in you. As we start this time of worship, wherever we are, fill us with anticipation and prepare us by your spirit. Be the first thoughts in our hearts and help us to be conscious of your direction. Strengthen us for service. Nourish us with the bread of life. Transform us for our mission. In the name of Jesus Christ we ask this. Amen. I'd like you to imagine that you're on an island. You were on a boat, but the boat hit some rocks and started sinking, so you had to float to land with a life jacket. The island is deserted. There's no signs of life anywhere. All you can see are rocks and trees. You can smell the seawater and hear the waves crashing on the shore. 
You found some supplies from the boat, but now you've run out of food to eat, and you're starting to get really hungry. You're wondering where you're going to get food from. You try to eat the palm tree, but the leaves are too hard. You try to eat the sand, but the sand's too dry. And just then you see something falling from the sky. It gets closer, and closer, and you realise it's a big lunch bag, and it almost lands right on top of you. Oh! And when you open it up, it's a big fresh loaf of bread. It's bread from heaven. You're saved. Jesus once said, I am the bread of life. Wow, what does that mean? In the same way that bread sustains us and would help keep us alive if we were stuck on a desert island, Jesus gives us life and he sustains us. If you really were on a desert island and bread fell from heaven, wouldn't you wonder where it came from? Well, God the Father sent Jesus to us like bread from heaven. The crowds weren't interested in knowing Jesus or where he came from. They only wanted Jesus to give them food. Jesus wants us to know him. And that's why he told us that he is the bread of life. No snack or food will ever truly satisfy us. But knowing Jesus will give us life forever. When the people found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Teacher, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you aren't looking for me because you saw me do miracles. You are looking for me because you ate the bread and were satisfied. Don't work for the food that spoils. Work for the food that stays good always and gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you this food, because on him God the Father has put his power. The people asked Jesus, What are the things God wants us to do? Jesus answered, The work God wants you to do is this, believe the one he sent. So the people asked, What miracle will you do? If we see a miracle, we will believe you. What will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. This is written in the scriptures. He rained manna down on them to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. It was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my father who is giving you the true bread from heaven. God's bread is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The people said, Sir, give us this bread always. Then Jesus said, I am the bread that gives life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty.
You know, it was once said, um, recorded that the words of Jesus when he said, man shall not live by bread alone. It was found in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 when he was being tempted in the wilderness and he was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 this whole idea that the bread is not enough oh how true it is I mean let's face it which one of us doesn't like a nice fresh sandwich nice piece of bread and can you just imagine the smell of baking bread those of you who bake your own bread how fortunate you are to have that beautiful aroma in your homes when you do your cooking it's very true that we can't live just on bread though um, i'm grateful to the british nutritional foundation i had a, well, a look around on their their website when I was doing the preparation for this and now I am fully informed. I'm fully informed about things like macro and micronutrients of carbohydrates, proteins and fats, of vitamins and minerals, easy for me to say, and water, all these kinds of things which are essential for good physical health. And Although we want to base what we teach in these sessions very firmly in the Word of God, there are some really good practical outworkings for you where you are, no matter what your level of physical fitness or activity may be, that key to all this is good nutrition, to make sure you eat, you take into your body those kinds of things that are going to benefit it and a good mix of them as well. You know, lots of things we, we, we love. I don't know in the world we love our fast food these days, don't we? We love our snacks. We love this. We love that. We love something else. But, but really, when it comes down to nutrition, there are these basic building blocks, these basic elements of carbohydrate, protein and fat, vitamins and minerals and water which we all need to maintain a healthy body. Um, a, a major UK food retailer has just finished a whole um, campaign about the great fruit and veg uh, campaign, wanting people to, to buy fresh and to, to eat fresh food. And I don't know what your particular circumstances are, but I want you to try your best to live a healthy lifestyle that uh, the good things that we that we eat uh, that that go beyond just bread are, are are so essential that we may become healthy people. When we look around our world, though, we see that there are some people who have a very rich diet, whereas there are others who have a very poor diet. There are certain corners of our world where people just do not know where their next meal is coming from and they scrape a subsistence living on rice or flour or on those kinds of things. And if they can get some protein, be it in a fish or an egg, then that, that's a really a good day as far as they are concerned in their nutrition. So when Jesus says to his listeners, I am the bread of life, What's the context of that? Well, the context of it is that he's coming back from having fed the 5,000. You know, the feeding of the 5,000 is probably a, a story which you know of if you don't know. And, and it, was a, it was an event where there were thousands of people following Jesus. And uh, the disciples um, came to Jesus and said, how are we going to feed this lot? Because there's, there's really nothing we can do. And Jesus said to them, what have you got? And uh, one of the disciples said, well, there's a little lad here with uh, five loaves and two small fish. We could use that, could we? And Jesus said, yeah, give it to me. And he prayed and he blessed it and he broke it. And there was enough for the whole crowd. And there was 12 baskets full left over. Great abundance. And then out of this, uh, Jesus goes away across the lake, across the Sea of Galilee. And uh, when he, he, he is, is there, the whole crowds follow him. And, and they say, Master, Master, Master. And, and Jesus said, look, you're following me not because of what I've done, not because of what I've taught, not because of who I am, but simply because I put food in your stomachs. And then we have the, the story that uh, 
that we we were uh, we listened to earlier on. Master, what shall we do? What shall we do? Well, Jesus said, "Believe in Him. Give us this bread. I am the bread," said Jesus. The, some of you may uh, more astute of you, and I just have to say that thank you for those of you who point out things like the flowers or the light bulbs or whatever in my in my office here. Um, but over on the piano, I don't know whether you've noticed. Um, I, I just let me just go and fetch it. Uh, there's there's the praying hands, and then there's this 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 stone stoneware cup, and in the middle of it is a pebble, a, a large pebble. Having said that. I picked up off the beach. We've we've often I don't know if you can see this, but we've often thought how much this looks like a loaf of bread with the end cut off. Fascinating. I, I love it. Um, it's a very tactile thing, um, but it's a, it's a stone, uh, and Jesus in his temptations um, was was faced with the with the compromise. Make these stones bread. I could turn these stones into bread. Well, sometimes when I'm peckish, I wonder whether I could turn that into, into bread. It would be good, but it, as it is now, it will break my teeth. But the bread that Jesus said he was is, a, is, a, is an embodiment of all the bread that was ever expressed in Scripture. When the children of Israel, the descendants of, of Israel, Jacob, were, were in the, the, the wilderness having escaped from slavery in Egypt, then God gave them manna from heaven, enough for today. As we've alluded, when Jesus was with the crowds on the, by the Sea of Galilee, he broke the bread and the fish and there was enough for everyone. And of course, in many Christian traditions we have the symbolism of the bread and the wine which is enough to remember that we should remember the sacrifice of Jesus you see when Jesus sustains our physical well-being and calls us to care for ourselves physically in our own bodies he is saying I have got to be intrinsic to that I am have an important part to play in your physical well-being. Now, I know very well that those listening to this message will be of all kinds of physical fitness and ability and disability, and we recognise that. But we do know that whatever state you find yourself in today, as you're listening to this message, I want you to know that Jesus can sustain you in your daily walk. But this has got to be more than just some kind of theological abstract. This has got to be really practical. And so when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he wants to feed you richly, feed you so that you will be sustained, feed you so that you have enough for each day, feed you so that you have a sense of well-being in your spirit. There is too much poverty in our world and we need to do something about it. There's too much unfairness in our world and we need to do something about it. For God's heart breaks when one hoards and another is in need and want. And so let us share what God gives us. And if Jesus is the bread of life, then we should share him, we who know him, with those who need to get to know him. Do not neglect your own well-being physically my dear friends. Look out for yourself. Take care of yourself. Seek help if something goes wrong from the professional point of view. Seek that out and get yourself as well as you can, for in your well-being there is honour to God. A, a songwriter, when we're going to, to move to a conclusion, a songwriter, Frederick Kahn, um, wrote a song which, which is entitled For the Healing of the Nations. This is our prayer for you today. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords to a life of love in action. Help us rise and pledge our word. You see, Jesus being the bread of life, 
wants to sustain you in your physical well-being. And if there is something wrong in that, it affects every part of you. And so our prayer as we conclude our worship together today is that God would enrich your life. That you would have wisdom in taking into your body those kinds of foods that will sustain you a breadth and a wealth and a variety in such a way that you will know a well-being that there should also in your spirit be that same sense of balance and well-being for you too today may god richly bless you and feed you and allow you to be nourished and grow in and through him and when you know you have enough then share with those round and about you for the nations in this way truly will be healed may god bless you thank you for joining with us again this week and we hope to see you again soon god bless you <laughs>